Welcome. The Buffalo Diocese is firing back against the whistleblower in the church sex abuse scandal. Bishop Malone is releasing documents of his own. The diocese released a seven page statement just before midnight last night saying that Bishop Richard Malone is quote stunned and dismayed by what his former secretary Siobhan O'Connor is saying. Tonight O'Connor is responding. Seven Eyewitness News I team chief investigator Charlie Specht has been following this story for us once again. The diocese is now pushing back against Siobhan O'Connor, the whistleblower and key source for the 7 Eyewitness News I-Team's investigation of Bishop Richard Malone. Documents provided by O'Connor, the bishop's former secretary, showed Malone allowed priests to remain in ministry or return them to ministry despite allegations of sexual misconduct and withheld the names of more than 50 priests from the final list of the accused. Twelve hours after O'Connor held a news conference across the street from the bishop's office, the diocese released a statement at 10 minutes before midnight calling O'Connor's remarks, quote, embarrassingly contradictory. Before she left her job, the diocese points out that O'Connor wrote Bishop Malone an email saying, I will always be deeply grateful to have worked with you, Bishop. In truly countless ways, you have inspired and edified me. I am the better for having known and worked with you. In another exchange provided by the diocese, O'Connor said, I truly missed you and the chancery today. In response, O'Connor released a statement to 7 Eyewitness News this morning, saying, This was never about me. This is about the survivors, our diocese, our community, and our church. The bishop needs to explain why so many priest names were cut from the list of 42. Instead of engaging in these necessary discussions, the bishop has opted for needless deflection. Last week, O'Connor explained her personal struggle with providing the documents in an interview with 7 Eyewitness News. At the time, I, all I knew I could do was listen and, and then pray for them. But when I realized I could do more, that spurred me on. I wasn't spurred on by, I have no malice towards Bishop Malone. I, I, I bear him no ill will personally, but I owed my loyalties to something greater than him. On Twitter, Catholics reacted to the bishop's statement, calling it a pathetic low-blow response from Bishop Malone. Attorney Steve Boyd, who represents alleged victims of priest sex abuse, said, Back to the same old Buffalo Diocese playbook. Defend by attacking the accuser's credibility. The real embarrassing contradiction is church leaders pretending they are victims. Florence Brown said, Ms. O'Connor has a conscience and an ability to love even in bad times. Shame on the PR person and shame on Malone. You got caught and now all of you are in panic mode. And from Amy Ghicetti, this is as tacky as it is shameful. The wheels are coming off for certain. The Buffalo Diocese needs to get a grip. Meanwhile, the diocese just announced that it has, it has placed yet another priest on administrative leave while it investigates a complaint of abuse. Father Michael Duran is listed in the Diocese of Buffalo directory, but has an address in Florida. He did not return our call seeking comment, but he is the 16th Buffalo Diocese priest to be placed on administrative leave this year. For the I-Team, Charlie Speck, 7 Eyewitness News. Charlie, thank you. You can read and watch all of Charlie's groundbreaking reporting into the Catholic sex abuse crisis right now on WKBW.com and the WKBW app. His three-part series outlining how Bishop Malone handled the allegations is under a special section called Fall from Grace.